everyone. Welcome to episode 9 of my series A Beginner's Guide to Procedural Generation. For this episode, we will be exploring how to generate a procedural path in our worlds. This can be done to provide a path for enemies or just generate a walkable terrain for the player. Before we start coding, let's take a look at what we are trying to do and how. For the path generation, we need to be able to do a couple of things. The first one is generate a grid, then store the grid tiles into a list, create a path object that will use the generator tiles to create a path, generate the path by moving a specific direction in our list depending on the start and end position, and finally return that path to our world generator. Now that we know what we are trying to do and how, let's jump into the code. In Unity, the first thing that we want to do is create two script files, one called path and another called world generator. The first thing we want to do is open up the path script. For the path script, we don't want to extend from mono behavior and we don't want the update or the start function. The first thing that we need to do is define a private integer called radius and create a constructor so we can pass in the radius from our world generator. For now, this is it for the path. Let's move on and generate our world. Open up the world generator script. We can get rid of the update function since we won't be using it. Now we need to define a few variables. The first one being a static list of type game object called generated tiles. Followed by a private serialized field called tile prefab of type game object. Next, we want to define a radius. For this, we make a private int called radius and assign it a value of 10. That's it for our variables. We can now move into the start function. First thing, let's define our path object. Let's call it path generator and pass in our radius. Since we're generating a grid, we need two for loops, one for the X axis and one for the Z axis. If you're uncertain about how to generate a grid or what these for loops do, please check out episode one, where I go into detail explaining how to generate a grid. Now that we have our two for loops defined, what we need to do is instantiate this tile prefab based on the X and Z axes. For its position, we want to pass in our X axis multiplied by 1.5F, zero, for the y axis. And for our z axis, we do z times 1.5. For the rotation, we simply pass in the identity, which means the rotation of the object that we've defined. Now, for every tile that we generate, we want to add it to our generated tiles list. So, by calling on the generated tiles, we can use the add function to pass in our tile game object. Now, while we're in the world generator, let's define a few functions which our path generator will contain. The first one being is assign top and bottom tiles. This will take the Z value followed by our tile. If we break out of our for loops, we now know that our world is generated. And after that generation has happened, we want to go ahead and generate the path. Now this is going to be another function contained in the path generator. This is called generate path. Now we've pretty much defined our world generator. Let's move over to the path script and create these functions. For the path, there's a few values that we need to define. The first being a private list of type game object called path.
followed by another list of type game object called top tiles. And one more called bottom tiles. We need to define one more integer. This one is called current tile index. We also need to define two booleans. The first one being has reached X and the second one being has reached Z. These are all our variables defined. We can now go ahead and define our first method. The first one being assign top and bottom tiles. This function will take in an integer called Z and the game object called tile. Now we need two if conditions. We need to check if we're on the bottom row and we also need to check if we're on the top row. For this, we can do if Z is equal to zero, then we want to add our tile to our top tiles. And if the Z is equal to radius minus one, we want to add the current tile to our bottom tiles. Now that we've assigned our top and bottom tiles to our lists, we need to create a Boolean function called assign and check starting and ending tile. But before we do that, we need to define two more variables, a private game object called starting tile and the private game object called ending tile. Now let's define our Boolean function. Now we need to define two method variables. The first one is a type of integer called x index. Now this value is going to be equal to a random number in our top tiles. To do this, we can call on random.range, passing in zero, and our top tiles dot count take away one. Now for the second variable, we need to do essentially the same, but for our bottom tiles. So it's pretty much the same. But instead of using our top tiles, we use our bottom tiles. Now we can go ahead and assign our starting tile and our ending tile. Since this is a Boolean function, we need to return either true or false. So what we want to do here, is we want to check whether or not our starting tile and our ending tile are null. To do this, return starting tile not equal to null and ending tile not equal to null. So now we've assigned our top and bottom tiles. We also do an assign and check for our starting and ending tile. We can now define our generate path method. In this function, the first thing we want to do is we want to assign and check whether or not our starting tile and ending tile is none. So we can call on the assign and check starting and end tile. Now we need to create a method variable called current tile. We assign this as our starting tile. Now that we have a current tile defined as our starting tile, we need to create a while loop. For the while loop, we need to check if we've reached the end of our X axis. For this, we will say, if not has reached X, then we want to execute the code in this while loop until has reached X is equal to true. However, when working with while loops, it's always a good idea to create a safety break. Otherwise, when you go to run your game, Unity will crash and you'll need to restart it. So on top of the while loop, let's create a variable called safety break X. Sign it zero. And within the while loop, we want to say safety break plus plus. And if safety break is greater than 100, we just want to break out of this loop. Now that we have our safety break defined, let's go into the logic that we will need. The first is an if statement. If our current tile that transform dot position dot x is greater than our ending tile that transform dot position dot x, 
we want to move down. Otherwise, if our current tile dot transform dot position dot x is less than our ending tile dot transform dot position dot x, we want to move up. Then we have an else clause. This means that we have reached the end of the x axis. So we can say has reached x equals to true. Now we've defined our x axis, but we haven't defined our z axis. For this, we're going to need another while loop. Outside of the first while loop, we create another while loop and we say, if not has reached Z, execute until we have. However, since this is another while loop, we are going to need another safety break. Now, this while loop is essentially the same. The first piece of logic is another if statement. I'm going to say if the current tile transform.position.z axis is greater than our ending tile.transform.position.z axis, then we want to move right. Else if our current tile transform.position.z is less than our ending tile.transform.position.z, we want to move left. Otherwise, we know that we've reached the end of the Z axis. So, has reached Z equals to true. Now we need to define these functions. Move down, move up, move right, and move left. Outside of the generate path function, we can create a private void called move down. <coughs> this function will take a reference type of type game object called current tile. This means that our move down function can replace the current tile that is defined as a method variable in our generate path. If that still didn't make any sense to you, don't worry. I have some documentation in the description below, which you can use to learn all about the ref keyword. Now that we're in the move down function, the first thing we want to do is add the current tile to our path. Next, we want to get the index of where this tile is in our generated tiles list and assign this to our current tile index. Since we're working with lists, we can use dot index of passing in our current tile, which will look through the list and tell us the number of where this current tile lives. Now we want to create an integer variable called n. This will be our current tile index, subtracting our radius. Since we're working with a radius and we haven't defined a world X or world Z, so what we're essentially doing is we are getting the tile below the current tile. Now that we have the tile below the current tile, or at least the index of where it is in our list, we can assign our current tile as that tile. Current tile equals to world generator, generator tiles, passing in our n value. We have our move down function. Now we can define our move up function. We can go ahead and copy and paste the move down function, rename it to move up. And then instead of subtracting, we want to add the radius. That's move down and move up finished. Now we need to be able to move either left or right. So let's define another function called move left. Again, referencing our game object current tile, adding that current tile to our path, grabbing the index of that current tile, And now that we have the index, we want to increment it by one. So we can do current tile index plus plus. Now that we have the left tile, we can assign that to our current tile. And that is our move left function defined. We can go ahead and copy and paste the move left function, rename it to move right. And instead of adding one, we want to subtract one. 
That is done by current tile index minus minus. Go ahead and save. Now if you see your project probably has some errors and that is because we need to pass in the current tile reference into these functions. So using the, the ref keyword we pass in our current tile and we do this for all the other methods. Now we have our X axis while loop and our Z axis while loop defined. The last thing that we need to do is add the ending tile to our path. So outside the has reached X while loop, we say path dot add ending tile. Click save, head back into the world generator script. Now the reason we have an error here is because we've defined assigned top and bottom tiles as private when we need to define it as public. So back in the path script, we can set assign top and bottom tiles as public. Click save. Do the same for our generate path. Head back into world generator and the errors are gone. Now we have our path, but we're not doing anything with it at the moment. So back in the path script, we need a getter method to return our path. So we can say public list of type game object called get path. And this will return our path. Click save, head back into world generator. And to make sure that this is working, we can do a for each loop calling on our path generator to get path. And inside this for loop, we can do p object dot set active false. Now that this is finished, let's head back into Unity. Within the Unity, let's create an empty game object called world generator drag and drop our world generator into the inspector, create a 3D object type cube, scale down the Y axis, rename it to tile, create a prefab, delete it out of our world, back into the world generator, drag and drop the tile into our tile prefab, click play. And if you see the tiles are missing, which means our path is working. We can regenerate. And you can see here, we have a completely different path. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, what we can do is offset the starting tile. So back into the path script, below our current tile, we want to create a for loop to run three times. And in here, we can say, we want to move our current tile left three times. Click save, head back into Unity, click play. And as you can see, we have a much more interesting path. What I would recommend is for you to play with the values. You can set this to be three, four, five, depending on how much you want to offset it by. You can make it move right, up or down. It's entirely your choice. Thank you very much for joining me on episode 9 of my series, A Beginner's Guide to Procedural Generation. I hope this episode shared some insight into how to generate procedural paths for our game worlds. As always, if you'd like to do some further reading, I've included some documentation in the description below. Please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. This has been Russ and I'll catch you next time.